this lesson, we're going to talk about definite intervals. Um, this is more of an intro to definite intervals. So um, the first thing we're going to talk about right here is thinking about definite intervals as um, area under the curve. Um, you have the integral from a to b of f of x dx equals a sub 1 minus a sub 2, where a sub 1 is the area of the region above the x-axis but below the curve, and a sub 2 area of the region below the x-axis and above the curve. So the big thing with a1 and a2 is you're going to find the area for a1, you're going to find the area for anything below the x-axis, but you're going to subtract that part in your answer. Part A is the integral from negative 1 to 3 of the quantity 3 minus 2x dx. So the first thing I want to do is graph this function. So you can see it's linear. You're going to go up 3 for your y-intercept, and then your slope is down 2 over 1. And we're looking at this line from negative 1 to 3. So if we go from negative 1 all the way to 1, 2, 3, here is your area that we are talking about. So you can see there's two triangles. Um, the one on the left is above the x-axis, the one on the right is below the x-axis. You can see that because this line has a slope of negative 2, we're going from this point 1, 1, and we're going down 2 over 1. It's crossing the x-axis right in between these two x values 1 and 2. To evaluate this definite integral, we're going to first look at this triangle right here on the left. We have the area of a triangle is 1 half base height. So your base is going to be 2 and a half. So 2 and a half is the same as 5 halves. And then the height of this triangle, it's going up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So our height is 5. So that would be the area of the triangle on the left. For the area of the triangle on the right, we're still going to use 1 half base height. Um, the base of this triangle because again, this is hitting right in between 1 and 2. The base of the triangle is 1 and a half or 3 halves. And the height of the triangle, we're just going to look at this triangle. And its height is a height of um, 1, 2, 3 units. This is going to be a positive value. This one will be a negative value. So we'll just put a negative in front of this area because the area is below the x-axis. So we can go ahead and finish this and you get 25 over 4. And then over here you get minus, that would be 9 over 4. And so you're getting 16 over 4 or a value of 4. This is a really specific problem. It says the area under the curve from negative 3 to 0. And this function right here is the square root of 9 minus x squared. And then it says dx. So um, this is a really specific function in that I want to look over here at x squared plus y squared equals 9. So from our past, we can see this would be the e equation of a circle with center 0, 0, radius 3. If we isolate the y, we would get y squared equals 9 minus x squared. And then what we would do is square root both sides, so you get y equals plus or minus the square root of 9 minus x squared. It really represents the top half and the bottom half of your circle. But here you can see um, the positive. So I had um, y equals positive the square root of 9 minus x squared. When you hit graph and it's in a square window, you can see that's the top half of the circle. And then if I were to type in negative the square root of 9 minus x squared, we're going to get the bottom half of the circle. So that makes your total circle having the positive and the negative square root, because again, that negative reflects the graph across the x-axis. So when we look at this definite integral, um, when you have the square root of 9 minus x squared, you're looking at the top half of a circle with center 0, 0, radius 3. We only want to evaluate from negative 3 to 0. So from negative 3 to 0, what you're doing is you're asking yourself what portion of an entire circle with radius 3 do we have. So you can see that we only have a quarter of the circle. We want one-fourth of an area of a circle. So one-fourth pi r squared where our r is a value of 3. And so on this problem you just get 9 pi over 4.
In this problem, we have the integral from 0 to 6 of f of x dx, and f of x is defined as a piecewise function. Your y is equal to a constant height of 2 for all values less than 2. So that would be constant, and it's less than 2. Right here, we had y equals x, so your y equals x is going to hit, remember that's just a line that hits y-intercept at 0, slope of 1. So you start from here, you would go slope of 1, because the graph is y equals x only between 2 and 3. Since x is greater or equal to 2, um, it fills in the open dot that was here at 2. And then finally, you have y equals um, this line, negative 3x plus 12. So if you wanted to see where that graph hit the x-axis, you could plug 0 for y, and you get 3x equals 12, or x is 4. So 1, 2, 3, 4. So you hit the x-axis at 4, and then your slope is negative 3. So if we go down 3, 1, 2, 3 over 1, you could also go back 1 and up 3, 1, 2, 3, and it's great because totally rigged. Um, that straight line hit um, the line y equals x right at 3, 3. And then we're going all the way to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So we'll go down one more set. Down 1, 2, 3, over 1. All right, so now we're looking at this piecewise function from 0 all the way to 6. So you can see... Um, that all the way to 6, we have this big area right here. So what we want to do is break this up into shapes that we're familiar with the areas of, because this is 2 by 2, this is a square. Um, so if we evaluate the definite integral from 0 to 6 of f of x dx, the first area we're going to talk about would be this right here, this square, or 2 times 2. Then we're going to add to that, and I'm going to break this up there as a trapezoid and a triangle. So you can choose how you want to break this up. But right here, I'm going to use the trapezoid. So the area of a trapezoid is 1 half the height times the quantity base 1 plus base 2. So these guys would be your bases, and the height would be 1 in this case. So we'll go 1 half the height, and then base 1 is a length of 2, base 2 is a length of 3. And then finally we have this triangle right here. 1 half base height, the base is 1, the height is 3. So that would take care of um, this right here, this area. And then we also have this big triangle here. So since this triangle is below the x-axis, we're going to do minus 1 half its base height. Its base is 2, and its height is that went down 6, so its height is 6. And again, I'm not going to put a negative 6 here, it's just this area of this triangle is 1 half base height, and then to account for the fact that the triangle is below the x-axis, we're putting the negative in front. So we'll keep cleaning this up. We have 3 halves minus 6, negative 2, and then here you have plus 8 halves, which is 4, so your final answer is positive 2. Okay, I just want to talk through some properties of integrals. Here we have the integral from a to b of f of x dx. Right now I have a as the lower limit, b as the upper limit, and here you can see that they've been switched. So if you switch the limits in that the upper limit is now the lower and the lower is now the upper, then you bring a negative in front. So this will come in handy if you see a definite integral and if your limits are out of order, then you can always flip the limits and pull a negative out in front. So that will we'll be using that often. Um, right here you can see that there's no change in the upper and lower limit. So you have zero area. And then right here we have the integral from a to b of f of x plus g of x dx. Um, so kind of similar to limits and derivatives you can split and do a sum of each individual integral. 
um, right here, c is a constant, so if you're taking the integral of a constant times a function, you can pull the constant to the front. Um, that'll be really convenient if you're working through more involved integrals, pulling those constants to the front and then just working on the integral of the function. Um, here we have a difference of functions, so you can do the same thing as with the sum. You can take the integral of the first minus the integral of the second function. And then finally, um, we have the integral from a to c of f of x plus the integral from c to b of f of x is equal to the integral from a all the way to b. And then it says where c is any constant. So I kind of think of this back to like geometry where you had like segment addition. So if you had like a, C to B. Um, kind of think about segment addition. If you add A to C and you add C to B, it's the same as A all the way to B. So it kind of works the same for this one. This example says if the integral from 2 to 7 of f of x dx equals 12 and the integral from 5 to 7 of f of x dx equals 4.1, find the integral from 2 to 5 of f of x dx. So, um, Again, sometimes it might help to write the values out on a number line so you can just visualize this a little bit better. Um, so it's saying if you're going from 2 all the way to 7, and the area under that curve is going to be 12, versus if you're only going from 5 to 7, and the area under that curve is 4.1, then find the area under the curve from 2 to 5. So you can kind of see that if you go from 2 to 7, subtract going from 5 to 7, it will leave you with 2 to 5. So we're going to write that out is equal to the integral from 2 to 7 minus the integral from 5 to 7. So 2 to 7, that integral is 12. And then 5 to 7, the integral is 4.1. So you get 7.9. And that's the end of our intro to definite integrals. You come back home.